Are you a risk taker? Maybe you've jumped out of an airplane, or maybe you're the first one in line to ride the biggest, newest roller coaster at the amusement park. Maybe you enjoy the excitement of changing careers or moving to a new city. Well, I have to be honest, I've never really thought of myself as a risk taker. I say no thanks to those high thrill activities. In fact, it makes my hands sweat just to even think about it. I am willing to move or I'm willing to start another job, but only if I feel like God's asking me to do that. It's not something I seek out. But one thing I'm learning is that being a risk taker is essential to our relationship with God. Now, I want you to understand, I'm not saying that I think God wants us all to jump out of airplanes, but I do think that every day it's important that we come to God, that we hear Him, that we follow His direction. And I do believe that He'll ask us to take some risks. Every time we follow through and we take a risk for God, it increases our foundation and our trust in Him. It might be something simple. It might be speaking to a stranger. It might be offering to pray for someone. It might be giving up some of our money. It might be allowing God to change our plans for the day when He prompts us to do that. I have a friend who wakes up every morning and says, what are we going to do today, God? Now that's a risky way to live your life, but what a way to live. You know, sometimes God asks us to do something bigger. He might ask us to make a career change. He might ask us to move to a new city. He might ask us to start a ministry. We all need to remember that God is always working and he wants to use you and me to accomplish his plans. We need to be willing to hold everything in our lives loosely. Our time, our money, our plans, even our relationships, they all belong to God. Author Allie Patterson says we need to make a daily habit of come, hear, practice. If we will do this every day, come, hear, practice, it will bring us closer and closer to God. I'm actively involved in a women's ministry called Touching Hearts. And we recently did a series of lessons on saying yes to God. One of the things I learned is that in order to say yes, first, I have to make a habit of coming to God. I have to hear him. And then I have to be willing to follow through with what he wants me to do. Let's look at some scriptures that talk about this. The first one is Isaiah 6, 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. The next one is Psalm 143, eight. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go for to you I lift up my soul. Psalm 25, four. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. And Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Allowing God to direct our lives. Being willing to obey what he asks us to do. That's a pretty risky way to live. I believe that God loves it, loves it when we say yes, even to the little things that he asks us to do. And saying yes to those smaller things prepares us to say yes to the bigger things. I can't think of a more exciting way to live. Until next time, Keep walking with Jesus.